Hey developers, today we're going to talk about functional components in Vue.js and what they are, why you should care about them, and how you can use them inside your Vue apps. So make sure you stay all the way to the end and you can learn all about functional components. Hey, and if you don't know, my name is Eric. I'm a full stack software developer. I'm also a big fan of Vue.js. I'm the author of Vue.js in Action. And actually, before I start, if you guys could do me a quick favor, in the link, in the, I have a link in the description below that I'm trying to collect some information on my next Vue course. So if you guys are interested, take this quick five minute survey. Let me know what you think of Vue, what topics you guys are interested in. And I might be using that on my next course. I really appreciate that. So just click on that description below and click on that five minute survey. So what are functional components and why you should care? So the reason this topic came up is I was first looking at um, how, what you do when you're creating really simple components in Vue.js. And I know there's a couple of ways you can do it. And I found out that functional components is one of the newer ways to do it. Actually, this is a slightly a newer feature. It hasn't been there forever. And, and I thought I would just explain it to you guys in a really simple way. This is going to be a quick video. So you guys can kind of just get an introduction of what functional components are inside Vue.js. So well, let's begin here. So first, uh, what are functional components? So the definition is that function components is a component which holds no state, has no instance. So normally if you, your components inside Vue.js are reactive. They're part of um, the reactivity system inside Vue.js, meaning that you can have this data object and things can get changed. You have computer properties and watchers and that any, anything in the template gets re-rendered anytime these values change. But with the functional components, there is no state. So you can pass things into them, but there's really no state. There's no reactivity. And so um, that that's what the functional components are. And there's a specific way we can, I'll show you in the next page here, that we can define them. They aren't the same as render functions. Those are actually a little bit different inside Vue.js or quite a bit different. Although you can have a functional component that has render functions in it. So let's take a look here. So here's a quick, a couple of quick screenshots of what I'm describing here. And by the way, I'll give credit here at the end of the slides. I took this, these couple of these pictures from this uh, awesome website. So I'll make sure I'll link it in the description below. So if you are creating a functional component, there's a couple ways you can do it. Uh, on the left hand side, you can see the screenshot. When you're creating your template, you put the keyword functional in, and that'll make it a functional component. Uh, otherwise, you can also, in, you don't have to do both. You can do one or the other. Um, on the right hand side, you can also put functional colon true, and that'll also make it a functional component. And you can see here that's render h right there. That is a render. Um, that's that's basically what I said here, that render function. So that is different. So that render function is a way that you can create a component without having the, that, that template tag at the top. And so this functional true means it's a functional component, and this is how you do it with single file components. And if you don't know what a single file component is, then uh, you probably watched some of my other videos. It's just a different way you can, it's just the usually the way most people create view components. So why would you want to use this functional type component? So first is speed. So functional components, uh, since they don't have state, you don't have like the extra initialization in the view system, the view reactivity system. So that makes it much faster. And uh, since there's no um, react to changes, um, so functional components will still react to changes like new props being passed in, but within the component itself, there's no way for it to know when its data has changed because it does not maintain its own state. So you can pass things in to these to these functional components and like props. So if your props change, it would still react to those changes. And props are a way, obviously, to pass information into components. So when we use functional components, so um, usually three different reasons you would use them is for dumb components. So they're completely presentational. They don't have any logic um, and you just want to have something very simple on the screen, but maybe it could be complex. I don't know, but those, but the point being is you don't have any logic in them. Or if you're doing something called high order components, 
which is a way to kind of like wrap basic functionality around these high order components. I think I should probably do a video on this in the future. It is kind of a nuanced topic and that, that and render functions, there isn't a ton of great information on how to do that. It's not really the idiomatic way to do view, but as you get into larger and more complicated view projects, you might run into high order components or you might, might need a, a need for them or to create a completely render, uh, or, render or use the render functions instead. But it's, it's not something you run into a whole lot. And then, but something you do run into a lot more is looping. So if you've ever had to loop through a object or if you're using loops and you're creating a component for each one of the loops, any item in the loop is a great use for this functional type of component, especially if you're just passing a bunch of information into a component in each iteration of the loop. So keep that in mind. So what values can a functional component use? I kind of stole this information directly out of the docs. So this is this is everything you can have in your component. So you can pass in, you can pass in props, of course, like we've mentioned earlier. So you can pass stuff in from one component to the other using the props. You have access to the children. You can do slow slots and scope slots. So you actually get access to this if you're using a render function um, inside the context object. I'll show you guys that an example of that in a second. You have the entire data object passed to the component as the second argument of create element. I'm not going to get into that. That's that's a little hard to describe, but you do get something called data. You can also get a, uh, something called the parent to reference the parent component. Some I think I did a video on this a little while ago on listeners. So you can kind of that's the parent registered event listener, like data dot on, and then injections. I did a video definitely on injections too, which is a way you can pass stuff between like deeply nested components. So here is a quick example of props that you might see. So this would be a render uh, a functional component. And so you access the props using the double, double curly brackets, but you do props.sumprops. So you see you still define the props in the export default, um, but then you uh, access it using this, this kind of syntax where you actually put in props and then some prop. And in fact, uh, you can see here on this list here with all the values of functional components, these, this is how you would access a lot of these things inside the template. So you have double curly brackets for children or slots or, or data and things like that. Uh, here is another example using a render function instead of using your template. So once again, since we're using render function, we use the functional colon true, which tells view that this is going to be a functional component. And then this time inside the render function, you have that const some props. So you have this CTX, that's the context that has access to all these, the props, children slots. So you can do CTX dot props dot some prop. And now some prop will be in, be able to be used inside your render function. So at this point you can actually return H and then your tag name and then some prop, or you can then do a bunch of nested returns inside there and create your whole render function. Once again, render functions are a little less idiomatic, so they're not quite as common as just the way uh, using templates. I actually prefer to use templates, but there's some instances you may want to use render functions for different types of components. So one other last thing I wanted to, to show you guys, and certainly this isn't fully 100% encompassing everything, that functional components can do, but I think this is a pretty, uh, pretty nice one that you want to know is that you have this dollar sign options, so you can create like custom methods. So instead of doing a computer property, which you can't do inside a functional component, you could still sort of create your own methods and and do something. So it allows us to have access to methods in our object. So you can see here's an example of it. We have this template functional at the top, describes it's a functional. And you can see you have that dollar sign options that user full name. So you see inside here in the export default, I don't have um, I don't have a list of methods, but I do have a method called user full name, which requires a user as one of the parameters to be passed into it. And then it returns user first name and user last name. So you could think of this as almost like a computed property, but it doesn't have the same, it doesn't act like a computer property. It's not going to um, so once you do it like this, it's not going like a computer property 
remembers what you've done last time on it and that it doesn't try to re-render it a million times over again if the values in it don't change. This is a little different. So this this will actually um, keep running as as long as, as you have this in here. But it's a kind of a quick way to get, get uh, a method inside your functional component. So dial our sign options and so you basically get uh, get that available to you. So that's all I wanted to cover today. That is functional components. So if you guys have any questions, I you can tweet me at ericch or leave a comment below um, with you have any questions about functional components. Like I said, this is a quick preview of this. If you guys really like this video, I can do another one and we can maybe even throw in some real world examples, but I wanted to keep this around 10 minutes long, which it is, which it is. Uh, I just want to give a quick shout out to stegosource.com. They had this amazing Vue.js functional components, what, why, and when blog, which I actually used to help make this tutorial and this slide deck and some of the images. So I just want to give full credit to them for that. And I'll make sure I put a link to them in the description below. So let me know what you guys think of Vue.js. And also, like I said at the beginning of the video, make sure if you have a few minutes, take that survey. I really appreciate it. And uh, take care. Thanks.